One of the real challenges in writing narratives is when you take on the assignment to write as Jesus. And the thing that trips us up is because Jesus is Jesus, <laughs> we have a really hard time actually seeing him as human and allowing him to have human emotions, to have human weaknesses, that kind of thing. So this is a discussion with a group that's fairly experienced about how you can effectively write as Jesus and bring out his human side as opposed to being solely focused on the divine. Before you listen, take a minute and read the passage. It's Mark 1, 29 to 39, and I've attached the narrative as well, so you might want to just read through it once before you listen to the commentary. Okay, I think I'm going to do something different here. I wrote as Jesus too, and instead of reading the whole thing at once, I'm going to read a paragraph at a time, and then talk a little bit about writing as Jesus as we go. So I, I'm starting with the whole day with the healing and everything is over, and I'm starting when Jesus takes off by himself. So it's just that part of the story. So here's my first paragraph. The rhythm was interesting. Three young men sleeping, all with different intervals between snores, made an ever-changing music. The sound was like women grinding grain, the periodic rasping of the top stone going back and forth across the lower, layered over more distant versions of the same sound. So, um, what's, uh, what question do I want to ask here? So, I'm talking about Jesus waking up. <laughs> Which he clearly did every day of his life, but we never talk about. <laughs> um, tell you what, I'll read the second paragraph too, and then we'll talk about him. He was so used to waking to the sound of Mary grinding, she was a notorious early riser, that he'd opened his eyes. It was still pitch black, too early. But rising to the level of wakefulness required to intentionally flutter his eyelids started up his conscious mind. And when he thought of what had happened the night before, he knew he'd never go back to sleep. So, um, writing about Jesus, what strikes you about that as something that's about Jesus? Well, you flash back to his early childhood. Childhood. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I identify with, there are sounds, I have family that bought, the house that I grew up in. So I'm still back there at times. And they just they had a fire, they had to remodel everything. And I realized the light switches sound different. I growing up mm. in that house, I am so used to even the sound of the light switches. Mm -hmm. And when I would go back and visit them, those had never been replaced. And I used to just remember that sound. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, those memories we have of just little things like that. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And what, just as you were saying that, you know, they they woke up to the sound of the snoring. He must have slept really well, you know, because a lot of people can't get through that snoring thing, uh -huh. you know, especially when you have two or three in a room. You know, I've done some ladies retreats with old people and OMG, I mm -hmm. slept in the bathtub with the door closed just because mm -hmm. I couldn't get to sleep in the room. And so, you know, you're like, he he had to be he had to so do you know so much during the day that he slept so soundly at night mm -hmm. <laughs> I've, I've been accused of the same thing you know like i go to bed i'm on purpose like i'm going to sleep i got limited time here let's get on with it <laughs> my roommate in college used to make noises just to see what would wake me up but mm -hmm. you know when he's fully satisfied when he's you know, he's asleep. He's asleep. Mm -hmm. But he, like, like you said, he had to wake up. So he had those yeah. moments of early morning yeah. fogginess. Yeah. And what he was did just he like wake us. up to? Mm -hmm. And he's and sleeping in a room with 12 guys or however many there were at this point, at least four. Um, and they wake him up. What's it like to be woken up when you're tired and it's, 4 a.m. or whatever, and it's still dark outside. 
And he probably doesn't have a pillow to put over his head. No, or earplugs. <laughs> or earplugs. No, no most, eye mask. <laughs> right. Most people are pretty grumpy and like get away, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. 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 Grumpy. I'm not even awake yet. <laughs> But so, he really said this was kind of like he was used to waking up to a sound. Yeah. And it was a different sound. And it was a memorable sound. Yeah. Because it was the beginning of his day. Yeah. You're good, Tony, at weaving in two. And you just know so many more of the details. Right. But it doesn't feel forced. But it's just it creatively is just weaving in a little bit of what their daily life was like. with yeah. the his, his past and, and then his present situation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard that kind of grinding when you've been on your trips to Israel? Okay. No, nobody does that anymore. So what I want to point out is just most people, when they start writing as Jesus, have to overcome their holiness, mm -hmm. religious -y, whatever. So starting out with something that's totally human, the snoring of the people in the room with me woke me up. <laughs> that everyone can relate to immediately takes you out of that religious mindset. And that's one of the things I want to push on us to do if you're especially if you're writing as Jesus. I think we've gotten good at it writing with as other people. But with Jesus we can still tend to be a little skittish. So feel free and let Jesus have experiences that you have. Like the whole thing of rising to the level of wakefulness required to intentionally open your eyes starts your conscious mind, and then you can't go back to sleep. Uh, <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm actually that whole paragraph is just my own life, <laughs> <laughs> and I just wrote it into Jesus because he's human too. Mm -hmm. So here's the next two paragraphs. Rising with as little stir as he could, he bundled up his himatian and slipped out into the courtyard. Nothing and no one was up but the stars and the faintest touch of purple on the eastern horizon. An hour till sunrise, he judged. The courtyard gave him space to properly drape his outer garment. Slipping the latch, he stepped out onto the deserted street. Jesus took a step toward the seawall 50 feet away but then realized the fisherman would soon return. He wasn't looking for a commotion in that moment, so he headed inland instead. So what do you get about Jesus' humanness out of that little? He didn't want to go where everybody was. Uh -huh. you know, he just needed some space. Okay. Already mm -hmm. all night last night, you know, with healing and restoration, and then he woke up to snoring, he just needs some space. Okay. I, I get that. <laughs> what else is in there that's a human detail? He's trying not to wake anybody. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. yep. He's frightened. He's respectful, so he can't let anyone else sleep. Mm -hmm. right. he can't Have you ever thought of Jesus when he gets up early to go out and pray, trying not to wake people up? <laughs> yeah, with the heat on the floor. The house, you know? <laughs> Have you ever done that when you got up early? Of course. Yeah. It's what people who love each other do. Yeah. <laughs> and just appreciating just the nature where he is, taking you now the, the sky and the colors. It's a really special time of day. Mm -hmm. and I can know, like, if I have to leave for the airport, you know, super early, one of the nice parts is, is that that early morning it's mm -hmm. to see that sky yeah. yeah yeah what's it tell you the part jesus took a step toward the seawall 50 feet away but then realized the fisherman would soon, soon return so he headed inland instead what do you learn about jesus humanness in that he's peopled out <laughs> okay yeah. yeah he's seeking that solitude yeah mm -hmm. he's also in tune with the pace of life there and then Okay. He went in one direction, but then he realized something and he went in the other direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's that? He needs to recharge with Jesus, with God by himself. Okay. He knew what he needed. He and he doesn't he needed. know where he's going. He doesn't know where he's going. Yeah. Okay. It's an ability to adapt in the moment, not like, you know, he was the eternal know-it-all. Right. He had second thoughts. 
mm-hmm. it changes mind. His first idea was, oh, wait a minute, this isn't going to work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you think, is that realistic? Did yeah. Jesus actually plan things that didn't? Like on the on the uh, Mount of Transfiguration, when Peter does his little spiel, you know, about building two shelters and then God has to sort of slap him down, the mm-hmm. encounter ends right there. So it sort of feels like Peter interrupted Jesus' encounter with God and then it was over. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Jesus thought this was going to go on for another half a day. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm allowing Jesus to make a mistake, yeah. which is a nice human, or just to rethink. Yeah, um, change his mind. Yeah. Now here's the next paragraph. He he headed inland instead. It wasn't until he passed the last house that he let out a pent up breath. Oh, that was a bit of anxiety, wasn't it? I just didn't want to be discovered. Not yet, anyway. I need to think. So what strikes you about Jesus the human in that? That he didn't realize until he let out the breath, like how, like, tense or whatever, how much he needed it. You know, it's like... Like how we're not sometimes aware of our own stress, and then mm-hmm. we get a chance to let it out, and it's like, oh wow, you know, I didn't know how much I needed that, or so, which makes sense given his experiences. Right. I've never written before. I don't think that Jesus felt anxiety. Yeah. No. But yeah. I put him in this situation that I've experienced. I got up early. I tiptoed out of the house. I'm trying not to be discovered. This is what I would experience when the front door latches and I'm out. Yeah. I made it. (laughs) So Carl and Meg, next time Tony comes, you need to be careful about that front door. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Disconnect that alarm. (laughs) The alarm goes off on the door as Jesus opens. I've disturbed the peace there, haven't I? So I'm I'm letting Jesus do the human things that I would do. Yeah. Yeah. And then that takes me to points where I I have to think through would Jesus really feel anxiety? I had to stop for a couple minutes at that point and decide what word I was going to use. Um but by by being human, it brought me to think about something I'd never thought of before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you have to you have to let yourself take an, a risk and let Jesus be like you enough so that if you stick with all the holy, you know, Jesus needed to be with his father, and they just had a wonderful conversation and everything sweetness and light then you think all the thoughts you've thought before yeah, mm-hmm. because you're staying in the same box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it also weaves in without rather showing rather than telling that having an emotion itself is not sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. You, right. you can feel the your feelings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So here's the yeah. next couple lines. I need to think. Yesterday, the day it really all began. It wasn't my first miracle. It wasn't my first teaching. But yesterday was the day it all came together. There was a before and an after. And everything that I do from now on will be part of the after. Mm. That was the day it all began. Abba, how do you feel about last night? I love watching you be you. How did you feel about it? Well, it was awesome and strange and kind of weird all rolled together. (laughs) It's such a pleasure to heal people. The fact that one word from us can take away a pain they've endured for years is quite a rush. Who wouldn't love that? Well, what felt strange? I mean, strange like different, unfamiliar. 
I know we've dreamed of this for years, but to be in the middle of it when all my hopes are becoming reality, man, my pulse was just racing. I had to tell myself a couple times just to breathe. And there's this surreal atmosphere over it all, as if one half of me was back in heaven, hurling its goodness down to earth like throwing stones in a river. But the other half of me was still down here in the mud, just kind of watching it all happen and wondering how it could possibly be. So what strikes you in that, in the sense of exploring who Jesus is? It really kind of brings up the, the dual nature. Mm -hmm. the yeah, the humanness, yeah. Mm -hmm. Both divine and human, you know, and, and the, this this mergence or intersection of those things and, and how that must have been felt really weird. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever dreamed for something for years and then you finally do it? What well, is it's not what like? you expect, but it's exciting, but it's not, but right. it, it looks different. It's a little less of the hype that you had made it in your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or it does, and it doesn't feel real at the time because it's been a dream for so long. Right. But I like the, I, I like, especially right there at the end, that shared sense of wonder. I have not thought about that, that part of being the human experience is that, yeah, Jesus knows how it all works, but then there's the part of him that's also sharing the wonder. And I, and I think we've talked about this before, but just the idea of like, God does this amazing thing and people are like, you were the facilitator, but you're standing back. Like you're the most amazed person in the room because right. you know how much that wasn't you. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that shared wonder is just, Kind of, we've gotten used to like Jesus' humanity, but just the idea that that this is another place that he isn't just God of the universe. Right. There's also this dynamic when you do your dream where it's like in your rational mind, you've thought about the possibility and it's, it's real mm -hmm. and irrational, but you haven't experienced it yet. And so when you experience it, this other half of you is catching up to... <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where you already are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd like to push us on when Jesus has a conversation with the father, that it's not just a holy sweetness and light divine. I mean, that's part of it, but. I think Jesus is also talking about God, about the same stuff that we are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Man, I worked so hard yesterday and I got five hours of sleep. <laughs> oh. That kind of sucks, you know? <laughs> I might have yeah. to nap uh -huh. this afternoon. <laughs> Papa was the only one who really understood him, right? And yeah. it was like his confidant and, and, and his, you know. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, and how they're asking questions of each other. Well, how, what was that for you, Father? Well, what was that for you? A little bit of a coaching voice in there. Uh -huh. but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. But where does God in Scripture talk like that? Hmm. Cain and Abel is a great example. Mm, Where's yeah. your brother? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going back that far, so that didn't think I wouldn't think of that. Or even even in the garden, when he said, Adam, yeah. where are you? Yeah. It's not because he didn't know where he was. He didn't have his GPS. It, it was because he was confronting him. Adam, where are you? Yeah. Or it's just because we're having a conversation. We're not just having a blast from above. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that yeah so last part of this Jesus is saying the other half of me was still down here in the mud just kind of watching it all happen and wondering how it could possibly be you're kind of stuck between two worlds aren't you yeah. your spirit remembers being with me in heaven but your human mind never had the experience mm. Yeah, sometimes I feel like my heart and my mind are duking it out with each other, mm. which is a very human experience. Randy, can you say that first line again about 
the very first line about the double, double, you know, oh. that first line you read. There's this surreal air over it all as if one half of me was back in heaven, hurling its goodness down to earth like throwing stones in a river. But the other half of me was still down here in the mud, just kind of watching it all happen and wondering how it could possibly be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I'm just thinking of Jesus talking out what it's like to be a human with mm-hmm. Father. Father's never had the experience of being human. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So next section. The path forked around a small grove of figs, and Jesus opted for the right-hand path. He was still climbing up the low ridge behind town. The croplands were behind him, and he was navigating between rows of gnarled olive trees with their distinctive gray-green leaves. It was a cold morning, but not uncomfortable. Walking uphill kept him warm. So, Abba, whose idea was it to try this crazy experiment? Yours or mine? (laughs) Watching humans is a lot different than being one. (laughs) (laughs) Abba laughed. Don't look at me. You came up with this whole beautiful, loving, exquisite plan yourself. I'm in awe of how you've adapted so well and how you've represented us so perfectly. Mm-hmm. Thanks. I know it was me, but sometimes my human side wonders, what was I thinking? Enough. <laughs> what do I do now? The whole town is buzzing about what happened. Next thing you know, they'll pass it up the grapevine to Corazon and Bethsaida, and we'll have three villages crowded around Peter's doorway. (laughs) That sounds a little chaotic. What do you want to do? (laughs) Well, what I don't want to do is start the Capernaum International Healing Center and end up (laughs) building a building and spending half of my time fundraising. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about that, too. Yeah. Agreed. (laughs) Wonder yeah. where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So oh, what strikes awesome. you in that part? Oh. Of the conversation between Abba and Jesus. I love the line watching humans is different than being one. Right? <laughs> mm. And the whole thought of whose idea it was. You know, mm-hmm. like that's totally a conversation we would have with somebody in ministry or right. whatever, right? It's a partnership <laughs> alliance, yeah. Uh huh. Right. This, this, this but not just anybody, time, yeah. <laughs> yeah this, I love this, Jesus this. saying, What do we do next? And he says, What do you want to do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's not all about me. This was your whole idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. send it back to him, your idea to go down there. <laughs> which you never think of you know because you're the thought of our old ways of thinking was god yeah. sent his son right. to kill him on the cross you know that is not it you know and I for always him thought, to yeah. my idea i always thought it was god's idea like my whole like i'm learning all these revelations today i don't know what to do with them <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm God sent him exactly what you said, Jamila. God sent him. I assumed it was his idea. Right. Yeah. You can you can send somebody out and it not be your idea. It can be there. Exactly. Right. Go to college because they want to go. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. But you come to a certain premise, right, based on just flat words, you know, that you read one okay. time. Mm-hmm. Well, just, I'm not trying to make a theology out of that, but where I was coming from is if somebody's got to go die for something, I think I'm going to let them make that choice instead of making it for them, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> it makes total sense. It does. Yep. And I like the part, if you think about his dream coming true, he spent 33 years with a growing awareness at some point Mm -hmm. Uh, that ministry is coming but now that it's here and everything that comes with it you know is there this human response to go hey maybe the carpenter shop wasn't so bad yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) i like sweeping up those shavings (laughs) it's a whole lot wake wake up to mama's 
grinding rather than three, four or five guys mm-hmm. snoring, you know. Mm-hmm. One thing I'm this wasn't conscious, but that I'm conveying in that conversation is that they're enjoying talking to each other. They're not just having a holy conversation. They're having a best friend's conversation. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Whose idea was it to try this? <laughs> Speaking of, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't want to start the Capernaum Healing Center. I mean, they're joking around with each other. Yeah. So here's the next part. Jesus ran through a series of options in his mind as he walked upward, finally reaching the top of the ridge. He looked back then over a wide green pasture descending onto the lake. The eastern mountains still brooded in shadow, but the sky above formed an orange and yellow halo over the goal line. A brilliant patch of white lit the center brightening until the sun peaked over the eastern horizon. Soon its rays began to shoot across the landscape. Jesus breathed a sigh of satisfaction. It's beautiful. And so apt, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has the light shined. Our friend Isaiah had such a gift with words. I think your answer is in that same passage, Abba suggested. Oh, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Naphtali's territory went all all the way around the lake. And the way of the sea, that's from the plain of Jezreel to the Golan. That's not just one place, it's a whole region. So, I'm not called to build a ministry here in Capernaum, but to take this show on the road throughout Israel? Sounds like you found your solution, Mm -hmm. which you wrote down for me 700 years ago so that today when I needed it, I could find it. Thanks for being there for me. Actually, I didn't write it just for you. I wrote it for us. Mm -hmm. So what do you get from that part? He didn't have a, a beginning, a full plan, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. He he went with it, had those conversations, and adjusted as he went. Mm-hmm. You know, he got revelations. Mm-hmm. He just the God that you know that Jesus. He just knew that he had revelations. Right. He had how did he? How did he get the revelation in the way I wrote this? Through conversation. Uh huh. And then connecting. He brought up a passage that was about the sunrise and then thought, oh, (laughs) this is about me and my mission. And it actually tells me where I'm supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Do you ever hear God that way where you're thinking about some random thing and all of a sudden it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We do it all the time with each other when we're doing this and then you see it and then you know, or in our own lives where you read a scripture, but you read it at that moment in your life and you know it. And all of a sudden it starts taking on a life of its own. It's different. Yeah. So to, to see D- Jesus going through that same process. Um, I mean, that makes those, that Isaiah passage three dimensional too. Um, which is very cool. Cause Sometimes those Old Testament passages, they sound like they're about Israel or they're about right. this. That's a that's very cool. Right. The way well, I love I- how he said our, 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 our friend Isaiah. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh-huh. there's a, an intimacy of, of, of what do you know about Isaiah? I know you're going to meet him on the Mount of, you know, you know, that's Elijah. But, you know, what, what are you going to, the memory of that? those words the way that that whole thing came together with that passage is jesus is watching the sunrise and so i was like oh maybe jesus would think about this passage about the light dawning Mm -hmm. um and all i remembered was that one phrase and then i went back and looked up the passage and i was like oh shoot well this this sort of gives the whole (laughs) right then (laughs) so 
So, yeah, I'm letting Jesus have human conversations with Abba. Mm -hmm. That moment, Peter and John appeared over the brow of the hill just behind him. Jesus, there you are. We've been looking everywhere for you. And so is the whole town. What have you been doing? Oh, nothing much, Jesus replied <laughs> mysteriously. He winked at Abba before turning to face the breathless men. Come on down. A crowd is already starting to assemble at our door. Jesus spread his arms wide, beckoning the men to look. Gaze around you. There's the land of Naphtali, from the far shore to just below where we stand, on Zebulun's land. And to either side lies the way of the sea. Let's head for the next village instead. We're going to cover it all. <laughs> so that's the end. Mm. And I would be Peter going, right now? Can I go get a nap? You know? Or... But we're doing so right. well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've had success here. Let's stay. Yeah. Let's right. another thing about the wife, you know? Yeah. Do we have a plan? <laughs> I got more honor in the last 24 hours than the last 24 years. Wait, and now well, you're going to just yeah. leave? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>